Welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna be mounting this monitor, or you can mount the TV, onto this wall right over here. So why do I wanna do this? First off, space is important, and I wanna utilize the most space that I can on my bench. So if I typically keep these right over here, I kinda of lose this whole maybe, I don't know what, a foot or two maybe? I don't know, I'm bad with measuring. And yeah, I lose that space, but if I mount it right up over here, I'll gain all that space back and I'll be able to utilize my bench. You know, you're working on computers, you just want the most space you can for screws, drives, whatever. And that's what I want to take advantage of. So why do you want to mount, why would you want to mount your monitor on the wall? Number one, space savings. Number two, multiple mo monitor support. Number three, just going for the look that you want. So there's a bunch of options why you would do it. There's many different types of mounts. Uh, the one that we're gonna be using today mounts on the wall. I have seen ones that they have these like little hooks that grab onto the desk. They have one that it just sits on the desk on a stand and then it holds up three different monitors. So the standard for mounting these monitors is what they call VESA. And what is VESA? Well, let's look at it. So pretty much VESA stands for Video Electronic Standard Association. A bunch of dudes got together and decided to uniform the standards of mounting monitors and or TVs. And the way the standard starts is, is it's the distance between the holes on the back of the monitor. So now if you want to know if you have a VESA mount, look at the back of your monitor. You see these holes. That means that that's the type of mount that you can use. I typically use this Dell monitors and I get these real cheap for $5 and it served me well, but we need something a little better for our testing. But if you look at it, it doesn't have any of the holes over here and it just has this stand, so you can't mount this on the wall. Well, you probably could with a bunch of wire ties, but yeah, that'd probably be a little tacky. So this is the standard that we have. So now if you look at the distance over here, we have one hole, two hole. If I measure these, which I've already done, they're four inches apart. So four inches apart, when you translate it to millimeters, is 100, roughly 100 millimeters. And it's 100 by 100. Now, if you look at their standards, and I'll post a link down below to the website which talks about the standards and everything, 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter, the type of screws that it calls for is M4 by 10 millimeters, which equates to that the mount that you want to use, you do not want this mount to exceed over 30 pounds. So this mount will support up to 30 pounds, and if you go past that, I guess it's in violation of the standard, but either way, if you're going to put a 70 pound TV on this, which it won't work because the holes are going to be spaced out different, uh, it's not going to be secure. And that's pretty much explaining it in a nutshell. So if you have a TV and you want to figure out the standard that you have, measure the holes. In this case, four, millimeter, uh, four inches translates to 100 millimeters. If you look up the 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter, it's going to tell you the screw that you'll need to use, and it'll tell you the recommended weight that the mount that you'll need to have for this. Uh, they go up to 200 millimeters, 400 millimeters, and the mounts get beefier. So this mount that we're going to use is supports 75 millimeter by 75 and 100 by 100, and it's mounted for this. It has one on the top, one on the bottom, and it's a swing arm. They have fanciers, ones that swing down, one that swing left and right, and all the hokey pokies. I bought this one on eBay, model ML12B, and this fits for what we're trying to do. This is a 22 inch monitor. I think it weighs like maybe five pounds. It weighs nothing. I mean, it literally weighs nothing. So this is the one that we'll need and it'll work good. Now, if I had a 55 inch TV, I'm definitely gonna have a beefier, mon a beefier stand for it. So, and if you look at that research or you need to find out, like I said, reference the whole design and I'll put a link to uh, a website that has good information on it that gives you an idea of how to choose the right one. So what tools do we need for this? Number one, a stud finder. You wanna mount this into the stud. If you don't mount this into the stud, the issue that you're gonna run into is, number one, stability. If you mount it into sheetrock, you put it over here, you bump it, you knock it, this is a little heavy in itself, it's gonna fall off, you'll mess up your investment. So a stud finder. We're gonna mount this into the stud and we're gonna pop this probably right about over here. Make sure you have a good stud finder that helps you find the center of the beam. If you don't have the center of the beam, if you go on the edge, you're not going to get as good support. You could break the wood, not even realize it. I've seen it happen. So you want to find a center. This one works really good at finding the center. I think this was bought at some local store. I can't remember, but it's a great stud finder. Next thing you want to do, and you don't have to do this, but I recommend it, is use a drill bit to drill a pilot hole. With the pilot hole, it's going to help you center the screw that's going to dig into the uh, piece of wood beam. 
and if you have a center it just gives you better peace of mind i just like to do this for peace of mind you don't have to do it you can actually go uh, straight into it and just kind of put more pressure but this is going to make it easier it's going to make it a little more consistent in my opinion uh next thing you could do is you can use a ratchet which uh i have one right around over here somewhere nope there we go you can use one of these ratchets to kind of help put it in it's a lot easier they do come with this little wrench over here but that's going to be kind of tedious doing it so we're definitely not going to do that and we'll definitely get the size and drill that right in uh tape measure is always good too that way you know the distance now i know that the mount is going to be centered right over here and if i measure it over here i think i have like 12 inches to the wall now the monitor is 22 inches and what i'm going to do is by measuring from this top hole which right over here is this top mount to over here i know that i have roughly eight inches this is roughly 12 inches so i know that when i place the monitor in over here it's not going to interfere with the wall right over here so just kind of keep that in mind let's go ahead let's um make the holes do some measurements for the height because you got to keep the height into consideration and let's see how this comes out all right so this is what we're going to do so i went ahead and i took the mount and if you look at the mount over here it has the hole over here and the hole over here so these are the two outside ones that we're going to use so now what i do is i go ahead and i use the reference hole on the back of the monitor and i measure the height from this hole to the top of the monitor and this hole to the top of the monitor that way I know that when I put this mount on, I know how much the monitor is going to stick below and stick up on the top. And that way I know if I need to go higher or lower so I don't hit the bottom of the desk or hit whatever I have mounted over here. So we went ahead and we've measured five inches to the top and we measured six inches to the bottom. So I know that's going to be my reference and it gives me plenty of clearance from the bottom, especially if I want to tuck in the keyboard and plenty um, of inches to the top that way i'm not interfering with anything i got mounted decorations and i don't have to redo my whole wall so this is going to be the exact location we're going to do then what i go ahead and do next is i go ahead and i just kind of drill the hole uh, kind of take a uh, excuse me take a pencil and mark the hole this is where the drill is kind of important in my opinion because once you've marked the hole you want to go ahead and you want to drill and create a pilot hole. And that's gonna help center the screws that you're gonna use. The screws they give you are these, and they're 13 millimeters, and they're kind of self-tappers. And if you look, you have the point at the end, and if by drilling the pilot hole, this is where it's gonna take in, and it's gonna be a lot easier to start it off. So that just makes it a little bit easier. Like I said before, make sure you have a good uh, stud finder, and that way you can center it up. I know for the fact that hole is center of the stud, because this is thing is pretty reliable, so just kind of keep that in mind. Now what we're going to do is I got my impact gun over here, which you don't have to use this. Maybe it's not recommended to use it, but I use it because it's easier. And I go ahead, I put it in and we're going to mount this first hole right over here. Get it lined up where it needs to be and just go ahead and drive it in. Now, don't go too crazy mounting it in. Just get it snug where you can still do adjustments. All right, and there we go. So now that is mounted. Next thing that you wanna use is a level. Typically they come with a level. Some of them do, some of them don't. And if you look, I am not leveled. Let's see if that comes in right over there. We wanna bring this down. Just a little more, so it's a little snug, but it's okay. We have this level. We're good. So what we're going to do next is I'm actually going to snug this up so I can go ahead and lock it in. And that way I know I have the level. And there we go. And this is why I kind of recommend using this because this makes it a lot faster. Now imagine if you're having to do it with a uh, that little wrench thing they give you. That's going to be a nightmare. So the next thing we, we got to do is we got this bottom hole over here. And we need to go ahead and take our drill over here and do our pilot hole. So let's go ahead and do that. So we got our pilot hole, we're going to take the next one and do the same thing, use our driver right over here and just pop it in.
good and we're still level so we're golden and that's pretty much it this is mounted and now we could go ahead and we can put it to our monitor so let's go ahead let's switch to our monitor real quick and let's knock that out real quick if you're watching the video and you were very attentive to it you notice I forgot to use these washers. The kit comes with these two washers. These are the washers that actually go onto the um, self-tapping screws that go into the stud. It kind of helps keeps the mount from bending, gives it a little more security on it and make sure it doesn't go through that. So um, I definitely will go back. I will install these. So these two washers, make sure you install them. Don't make the mistake I did and forget to do it because now I got to take this down and put that in. So just wanted to throw this in there. All right, so that's mounted up pretty good. That ain't coming out too bad. Swings easy, and the biggest thing is it's mounted into the stud, which gives you that extra security. Now, I was looking at the kit over here, and the kit does give you the provisions to mount it just through the sheetrock, which I guess for this monitor, it's fine, but like I said, peace of mind, if you're gonna be back there moving cables or doing anything and then swinging this mount as it is, I ain't trying to break my sheetrock, and I ain't trying to redo sheetrock and all that stuff, so. Mounted to the stud. Now, sometimes you'll have an office or some type of places where they have the metal studs and you have no choice, but they do have better anchors than the one this comes with and just consider that. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mount these screws that comes with the kit. Like I said, because of the standard, it tells us that M4 is the type of screw that they wanna use. Uh, they have a minimum of 10, these are 12, so they're a little bit longer. I have run into issues sometimes where these screws are a little too long and when you mount it into the monitor, it's loose. So you have to go ahead and use uh, washers. This kit doesn't come with those washers. So keep them on standby just in case, or you could go to your local hardware store and just get a shorter screw. So let's go ahead and let's pop this right over here. And this is easy in the sense that this monitor weighs nothing, but now keep in mind, if you have a huge monitor, um, it becomes a little tricky, not too bad. And also typically with larger monitors, the uh, mounting mechanism, which you can do with this one, but I just don't feel like messing with it. You could take them off, mount it, and then screw it back on. But this is light and easy, so we're not gonna lose sleep over it. These are Phillip head screwdrivers, which I should have right over here. So let's tighten them in. I'm a big fan of not snugging everything down until you get it lined up. Because if you snug it down, then lining it up is not gonna be the best. So let's get these four in. All right, so now that you have the all four in, snug them down, okay? And just make sure they're kind of snug. Don't over tighten these. If you over tighten these, you will snap the insert inside and you'll never be able to vase them mount it again. I've done that before and I mean, epoxy and super glue works great, but yeah, you want that security. Now, if you tighten it and it's snug and the monitor is still like loose and wiggling all that that means the screws are too long so just kind of keep that in mind snug them down don't go gorilla crazy on it or you're just gonna ruin the mount so these are snugged i'm happy with it and let's go ahead and move the camera and let's position it the way that we've measured and hopefully if my measures oh this was 360 kind of nice now hopefully if i've measured this the way i did properly this should fit into my corner the way I want it to be. So let's go ahead, let me move my stuff around and I'll show you the final product. So this came out pretty decent, very happy with it. What I like about it is I got the right height over here so I could slide my test bench just closer over here and just utilize the rest of my uh, bench over here that I have to do. This monitor has VGA support so we do have the plug just tucked in in the back over here because every now and then you get a VGA uh, system that you're gonna have to use or test because they don't have HDMI or whatever and it's out of the way It looks cleaner. It looks better. I got all this real estate to do what I need to do It swivels left and right I could come out swivel it this way and just all the options But for the most part it's gonna keep staying its happy home right over here So I'm definitely happy with that and this was actually a great upgrade to my test bench setup and Definitely the big thing is just utilizing the test bench now my advice I always recommend keeping these extra hardwares. Number one, it's good to have extra screws and you never know if you can reuse this mount or anything. And you have this wrench in my opinion is useless, but if you don't have tools, I guess that's all you have. And like I said, I don't recommend mounting into the sheetrock. Just find a beam. If you don't have beams in your house and you have those steel ones, then I guess you have to use it. But 
Um, yeah, just mount them into the wall secure. Make sure you're good with that. The stand over here, keep your stands. I can't tell you how much times that um, I see too many people selling monitors and they're trying to get the price that they want for it or they think it's worth and you can't buy it for that price because you don't have the stand. So tuck this somewhere, put it somewhere away, attic, garage, whatever. Because if I ever decide to sell this monitor, I could sell it with this and get a better price. I can tell you right now, people are going to lowball you when you don't have your monitor stand. And I've seen so many people mount it, they get rid of it and life moves on. So comment down below. Let me know what you think. Was this easy? This is something that you're going to do. Do you have use this for triple monitors? I know some people mount them on the top, mount them on the uh, below. Some tips and tricks, advice that you recommend for when you're mounting on it. If you like the video, definitely hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you're not for more content. Definitely stay tuned because we're going to be using this for um, our test bench, putting it all together and just doing more cool computer stuff. So thanks for watching and we'll see what we come up with next.